All right, so you have your server set up. Congratulations, by the way. And now you spent the, you know, last however long trying to get people to actually join your server. And now you actually have population on your server. Congratulations on that. That's actually the harder part than actually setting up the server is getting population into your server. But that also brings with it another problem. So if you have a population in your server, now you're probably deciding or probably thinking that you need to hire staff or hire staff to help moderate your server. So on today's video, I'm going to be talking about whether you should be hiring staff for your server or not, what kind of permissions you're going to be giving them. And I might even touch on a couple of tools that you should be using to moderate your server with. Hey everybody, welcome back to Russ Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your servers to make your server stand out from the crowd of the thousands of servers that are out there. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. Over and above your subscription, the other way that you can really help me out with this channel is to like it. And of course, put your comments in the comments section down below. All right, so there's basically a couple of different levels that we can be talking about when it comes to adding staff to your server. Now, first of all, before you even consider bringing somebody in at a staff level on your server, make 100% sure you trust this person. Depending on the permissions that you give this person, they can really mess your server over. And after you've spent all this time setting everything up, building a population, the worst possible thing that you can have happen is to have somebody come in and ruin it all for you. And it can happen just like that. It happens so fast. Admin abuse is the worst thing for a server and it will kill your population almost immediately. All I'm saying here is make sure the person that you're considering bringing in as staff, make sure you trust them. I highly recommend you use people that you know in real life and not somebody that you met on some random discord or something like that. Now, obviously not everyone is going to know people in real life that have an interest in playing Rust or helping you moderate a server. So of course there has to be an avenue where you can meet people such as discords and stuff like that, but you have to start them out really low with really low permission levels so that they don't have the ability to screw you over. And then as they start building that trust up, then you can start giving them more and more permissions. So let's talk about the different levels of trust, we'll call it different trust levels within operating a Rust server. So we've got the two built in ways or the native ways within Rust to grant people permissions to be able to do things on our server. The first one, of course, being owner ID and the other one being moderator ID. So really the only difference between owner ID and moderator ID is the ability to grant other players one of those two tags. So what do I mean by that? Well, anybody that has owner ID can apply the moderator ID to a Steam 64 ID or the owner ID command to a Steam 64 ID. However, a moderator ID can't do either of those two things. So it's not like if you brought in a moderator to your server and then they brought in their buddy or whatever, that person that you gave moderator ID to wouldn't have the ability to grant that moderator ID to his friend that he has now brought into your server. So whether you're using owner ID or moderator ID, they both have essentially the same permissions. Both can spawn items from the F1 menu, both can no clip, both can use God mode, both can also ban and kick players from your server. So when talking about Rust's native admin levels, owner ID and moderator ID are exactly the same, but moderator ID cannot create new moderators and cannot create new owners. And it's also worth noting that if you're not using better chat or some other chat plugin, or you're using a plugin like no green, then their names and their texts are all going to show up in green in chat and everyone's going to know that they're owners or moderators. And it's also worth noting that both of those levels can run commands from their F1 menu that are going to affect the server. So that's the built in stuff. The next section that we need to talk about is what you can do with oxide groups. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know I've covered a ton of stuff with oxide groups and permissions and different plugins that you can use to make your permissions management so much easier. There's tons of different ways that you can set up different levels of moderators in your servers using oxide groups. Now, this is what I suggest you do with people that you maybe don't know very well, but you want them in your server to help you out with what's going on. So forget about granting auth level one or auth level two. Let's just discuss what you can do with oxide groups. So this is actually like a real live server. This isn't a test server or something that I set up specifically for this video. This is where I play when I'm playing Rust. So let's pull up the admin menu and I'll show you what I'm talking about by setting up different user groups. So let's go into permissions and then group permissions. So now as you can see here, I have this admin group right here. And I also have this moderator group right here. So to show you what I mean by admin group. So this is the different permissions that I have granted to the group called admin. And there's only one person that's added to this group. So if you go through all of your different permissions, as you can see, this is a great example. I'm glad that it's first on the list admin menu itself. So there's permissions that are associated with admin menu that you only want admins to actually have. So let's go back here and let's go into the moderator groups. Let's go into moderator here. So as you can see, I just set up this moderator group because I don't have 
have anybody working on this as a moderator. So let's say we actually had somebody that we wanted to actually join our staff that wants to help us moderate our server. So do we want this person to be able to give items using the admin menu? Probably not, because when would you ever want a moderator to be able to give players items? So you wouldn't want to use that. So let's just set this up in real life, how I would actually set this up for our moderators. So do I want this moderator to be able to teleport to other players? Sure. For this example, why not? Do we want moderators to be able to strip players of all of their items? Sure. Let's do that one as well. Let's say we wanted them to be able to hurt and heal the player, but not kill them. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. Okay. So this would be a pretty good setup for a moderator coming into my server that maybe I don't necessarily trust 100%, but I do want them there with some abilities so that they can help moderate my server. So if somebody's messing around, they can pull up the admin menu. They can teleport to that person and actually decide if they were doing something wrong. Now, bear in mind the way that I'm suggesting this is they don't have auth level one. They don't have auth level two. Therefore, they don't have access to God mode or vanish. So the way this is set up right now is this person would have the ability to teleport to that player, but they wouldn't have any protections and that player would know that they were there as soon as they did that teleport. So let's say, for example, I did want them to be able to teleport in vanish. We would scroll over to the vanish section and grant them this vanish permission right here. So now I've actually messed around with my user groups a little bit. I've removed myself from that admin group and added myself to this brand new moderator group that I've now set up. So let's have a look at what this looks like now. So of course, it looks drastically different from what it did before. As you'll remember, I was able to deal with permissions and user groups and all this other stuff. However, now that I'm just in this moderator group, I only have access to a couple of different things. So now I have the ability to teleport to players. So let's say I wanted to teleport to this is my teammate right here. Where is he? All right. So my teammate's not actually on there. But what I am able to do because I did give myself that permission is I can do slash vanish and then I would be able to teleport to that person, which I can't do right now because apparently they haven't logged in in quite some time. So they're not showing up on this list, but whatever you get the idea. So by setting up different permissions for different user groups, we can actually give people admin abilities without actually giving them full auth level one or auth level two, which can be beneficial. It allows those people to start building a trust with you so they can start working their way up and hopefully maybe one day end up with actual moderator level with full admin abilities on your server. But that's totally up to you and you're 100% in control of that. So this is one of the tools that I suggest you have so that you can monitor or keep a record of what's going on in your server when you're not necessarily right there watching it. So if you're bringing in moderators or other admins into your server, you want to have a method of keeping track of everything that they do. So for example, Rust Core does exactly that. So I have this admin channel set up that is basically a reporting system for everything that happens in my server. And if you haven't seen my video on Rust Core, I highly suggest you watch it. I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner right now, but you really need to watch that video in order to set this up. And I feel that everyone should have Rust Core running on their server for stuff like this. So it's giving you a detailed breakdown of absolutely everything that I just did in the last couple of minutes while I was recording this video. So as you can see, I granted this moderator group a permission called admin.use and blah, 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 blah. It's showing everything that I just did right in front of you guys on screen. My discord is keeping track of all of that. So you can actually see here where I was actually removed from the admin group and I was added to the moderator group. Like literally this is keeping track of everything. It showed that I used the vanish command. It showed when I came out of vanish mode. It also shows where I was removed from that moderator group because I was done showing you guys that part and then re added back to the admin group. So this is a very powerful tool that everyone should be using if you're a control freak like me and you want to be able to keep track of everything that's going on in your server when you're not there to see it happening. So, so far we've talked about the built-in native auth level one, auth level two, or owner ID and moderator ID. We've also now talked about the different oxide groups and the different levels of permissions that you can grant to a moderator or a moderator in training or however you want to work this out. The third level of giving control up on your server is giving somebody full access to your console. Now, this is actually the whole point of this video. In my opinion, I feel that you should never have anybody that has full control of your console unless you absolutely 100% trust that person. If you're using a hosting site like icedhost.com, which is what you're seeing on my screen right now, if you give someone full access to your console, they have access to everything. They have access to your files. They have access to plugins that you've paid for. They have access to configuration files that you've spent hours setting up. So this right here, I don't suggest you give anybody access to this 
ever again unless you trust them 100 percent. i've heard so many horror stories about people even people coming from my discord that are quote unquote helping admin or helping moderate somebody else's server they get full access to somebody else's server like this right here and this can happen on any server it's not just iced host any hosted server this can happen to so they go in and they start messing around with plugins and they start taking plugins and they start installing plugins and it turns into an absolute disaster so if we go into my my file manager here and we go into my plugins here's my list of plugins right here i have custom built plugins in here i have paid plugins in here i have plugins in here that i am literally the only person in the world that has on my server so if somebody were to get access to this that could be absolutely catastrophic for me and my server they can steal the plugins they can remove the plugins and maybe block access so that i can never get them back i don't i'm just i don't i don't know how they would do that but let's say they did that that would be catastrophic for your server or maybe they go in and they install a bunch of plugins because they feel that you should have them or they feel that they want to have them on your server and you never purchased them. So you technically have no right to use those plugins on your server. If you didn't pay for them, it shouldn't be on your server. End of story. So now they're putting you at risk in the modding community for using pirated software or pirated plugins, whatever, however you want to word it. So what about if you're on a local host? Maybe you're not on a hosting site at all. You're simply hosting this server directly from your home PC. You can still mistakenly or unwittingly give access. If you gave somebody your FTP information, then that person would be able to log into your files and do the exact same thing that I was just talking about using this console here. FTP, that's essentially what this is, is a file transfer protocol. So it can happen if, like I said, if you unwittingly give somebody access to your locally hosted server. Now, after I've gone through all of that, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, this guy is super paranoid. Well, it's because I am. I've seen people get screwed over in my own discord and it's like, it's a terrible story and I hate hearing it, but I know that it happens. People are like, oh, I need some somebody helping with my server and somebody says, oh, pick me, I'll help you with your server. Yeah, sure you will. And they do exactly what I'm just talking about right now. They steal files and they wreck files and they wreck configurations. And now not everybody is malicious. I totally understand that. But there are those people out there. To be 100% honest with you, if somebody hadn't given me this exact opportunity that I'm talking to you about right now, I probably wouldn't be sitting in front of you right now making this video. Because that scenario that I was just talking about is exactly what happened is I had a server, I was playing on a server, the server owner decided that the population was growing enough that they wanted to hire help, hire help, because it's not like you get paid to do this. And I said, hey, pick me, show me how to do what you need to have done and I'll take care of it for you. So I started out really low on the totem pole. I didn't have access to much, but I did have access. This guy didn't know me. We'd never met in real life. I'd played on the server for, I don't know, maybe two months, maybe three months before they gave me this shot. And then inside of three months of that, I had full access. We were running running the servers on a dedicated box from OVH. And it was only like three months. And then I had full login ability through the OVH dedicated server. And, and that's where I was able to learn everything that I'm teaching you guys right now. So like I said, if I hadn't been given that opportunity way back in the day, I wouldn't be sitting here right now teaching you how to do this very same thing. So you do have to give people the chance to at least try and see what they can do and see if they can earn your trust and see if they can actually spend the time and put in the dedication that's required to do what it is that we do on our servers. Because I mean, let's face it, the amount of work and the amount of time that you put into your server is nothing to scoff at. It is a valuable thing that you've now created for yourself. Whether the rest of the world sees any value in it or not is irrelevant. It's your time and your effort that you put into your server. So you want to protect that. So let me wrap this up in the way that I look at my own servers and bear in mind that my servers aren't hugely populated like but I do have players in my server 24 hours a day so do I need somebody moderating maybe do I trust anybody or do I feel that somebody is going to be as dedicated to it as I am not even close. So I don't have any moderators and I, I don't have any admins other than myself. I've developed a level of self-control on my server that I only activate my admin commands when I absolutely have to. I never spawn anything in ever. I never no clip into anybody's base for any reason whatsoever. And these are things that are readily available. Like literally I could press a button on my keyboard. And like, in fact, I'll show you right now how, how easy this is for me. Like I can literally press a button on my numpad and it immediately activates vanish mode and no clip all at the same time. So I can like scroll through. Now this is an NPC base right here. So I know that directly goes against what I just said, but like I can no clip into this base just like that. Boom. All at the press of a button. And I have other buttons that I can do too. Like I can just drop rockets just like that. Or if I want to use C4, I can drop C4 just like that. 
So there's a level of self-control that you have to maintain. Otherwise, you're just going to ruin your population anyways. I've expressed these sentiments to you guys in the past on, on plenty of prior videos. Like admin ability, honestly, it ruins the game for anybody that has it. So if you have admin on your server, don't use it. <laughs> like don't use it unless you absolutely have to, unless you're chasing a sus down or you find somebody that's doing something that they shouldn't be doing or whatever, then you could maybe use some of those admin abilities. But I highly suggest that you don't. So therefore, do you actually need to bring in somebody else to do the same thing? You want to ruin the game for somebody else so that you have to set out all these rules and say, OK, you can do this, this and this, but you can't do this. Or you know what I mean? Like there's just so many things involved with it and it can ruin your server. It can ruin your population and it can ruin a friendship if this person was your friend to begin with. To me, in my mind, it's just not worth it unless you absolutely have to. So if you have hundreds of players in your server 24 hours a day, sure, you need help with that. You cannot moderate that many players 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just not possible. So you absolutely will have to hire staff. But all of that other stuff that I said still applies. You have to be able to trust them. You have to know that they're not going to go in and no clip through a bunch of bases and tell other players how to raid a base or you know where the loot is specifically specifically or where the TC is specifically, you just, you have to trust these people. Anyways, I've been going on about this for way too long. If you absolutely have to hire staff to moderate your server, then please do so. But please be careful with how much access you give them. If you need advice on how much power you should be giving to somebody, please connect with me on discord, discord.srtbull.com. And we can talk about it. I can help you through this and we can figure out a system that's going to work really well for you. All right, that's it for me. I've rambled on for way too long. I never intended on this video being this long. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until then, take care of yourselves, make good choices. I'll see you next Friday.